Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Chelsea and I've been in a bit of a reading slump recently. It is the absolute worst. I'm picking up books that I know should be good, but they're just not resonating with me. So I've been kind of reaching for my old favorites and that's what inspired me to do today's video. I'm going to be going through all of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books and going from, I think I'm going to go from my favorite to my least favorite. And yeah, so I've read her whole catalogue of books and she's my favourite writer of all time. I think she's definitely my number one pick, which is high praise. I think that's a really high praise actually, but I'm going to stick with that just because her words, her stories, they have such good, just the plot, the characters, the suspense as well. And she's so good at one-liners and there's nothing I appreciate more than like, a good one-liner that sits with you after you've read the book. So yeah, I'm going to go through my favourite books by her and some of her books are my favourite of all time, one in particular, which I will be discussing straight away because it's my favourite one of hers. So yeah, let's just jump straight into it. So my all-time favourite book of all time and my favourite book by Taylor Jenkins Reid is Daisy Jones and the Six. I've read this book three times and... I usually read my favourite books a lot, but because I want this one to remain special to me, I kind of limit myself to one read a year. Is that weird? It's kind of like Titanic is my favourite movie of all time, but I want to cry every time and I want to be hit with the feelings every time I watch it or if I read a book. So I like limit my viewing time of Titanic and same with Daisy Jones and The Six, which is funny, but this is my favourite book of all time. A friend introduced this to me years ago and it's kind of what got me into reading back in the day. But this story is about a rock group from the 60s and no one really knows what really went on in the band. So it's kind of like an expose, it's an interview and the band members are being interviewed about what really happened behind the scenes. The lead singer, uh, Daisy Jones, and the other lead singer, Billy Dunn, had a really strong connection that the public and the audience always wanted to know what really happened behind the scenes, in particular between them two, as well as the band, why did they break up, what really went on. So you go through this crazy journey of their experience before being in the band, getting in the band, their rise to fame and what happens after. And yeah, you're really just taken on this whirlwind of a journey with them. And the character, you just fall in love with all the characters, really. Everyone, majority of, of the band members, you really grow to love and you're rooting for all of them throughout the story. And yes, I just love this. I love the romance. I love the drama. I'm just a sucker for a good romance. And this one just left me wanting more. I wanted one more chapter. I wanted more. I just wanted this story to never end, really. And the ending, if you haven't read this book, which I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, this is the one out of all the books I'm going to mention. You just need to exit after you watch this video. Go buy it. It's so cheap now as well because it's so loved by so many. So I think I got my copy. Um, I think it was like $12 from Kmart. And yeah, it's like... My fave tapped it as well. Like, there's so many great one liners from Daisy and like empowering quotes. So, I highly recommend this one. Strong five out of five. And it's not a spicy one, it's a zero. Zero out of three on the spice scale. So, my second favorite book by Taylor Jenkins Reid is also my second favorite book of all time. It is One True Loves. And this book just hit me. I was on an emotional roller coaster. I have never cried as much as I have reading a book before, which really surprised me. I didn't think, maybe that's why I cried so much because I just didn't expect it. I didn't expect to like really, I don't know, I was like so attached to all the characters and I wanted everyone to get what they wanted and for it all to be happy-go-lucky for everyone. And yes, it's a definitely a journey with this book. So this book is about a woman named Emma and she has had this huge crush on this guy called Jesse throughout high school and they fall in love and they both want the same things out of life. Jesse's kind of like the cool guy, by the way. And so she's like, never thought she had a chance with him. Anyway, they fall in love and they want the same things out of life. They want to travel. They want to enjoy their jobs. They want to really experience everything. So they live in England and they move to 
the US and they both have really cool jobs and one day uh, Jesse goes off for work and he's in a helicopter and he and he goes off work the helicopter goes missing and he's presumed dead and um, she's obviously heartbroken she doesn't know what to do didn't expect this at all and it was all very sudden so Emma goes and moves home back to the UK to be with her family to support her during this time and she she really struggles really struggles of course and she's trying to get to know herself without Jessie and like trying to adapt without having her her partner with her so she goes on life years go by and she runs into an old friend who you do meet early in the book his name is Sam and he's a sweetheart he used to work with her at this bookstore that her family owns and they run into each other at a music store and they just hit it off straight away he has always had feelings for her and yeah they, so they hit it off straight away and then after they've been together for a little while Jessie is found and Jessie is alive and well and that's kind of like how it kicks off and none of that was spoilers it's it's I tried I was like how it, does this spoil it but no this is all in the blurb of the book so if you read the blurb what I've just said is kind of like what you'll get there's no no spoilers but that's how it kicks off and I'm not a love triangle person I, ha I hate reading them, reading them and I'll avoid reading them but this is like I don't know this this is like I don't know I feel like it's okay to read this love triangle like you have to read this book and you just have to deal with the fact there's this love triangle but you're like I love Jesse, I love Sam, I love Emma, you just, you're rooting for everyone in this book and I think that's what really hit me because I wanted everyone, oh, I wanted everyone to be happy in the end of the book and obviously not ev no, not everyone can win in a love triangle. Anyway, so that's that book. Oh, I kind of wish I had it right now. My sister is borrowing it at the moment, so I don't have the, actually have the physical copy, but I've already read it once this year, so I can't read it again until next year. <laughs> but I love this book five out of five it's not spicy I think it's like 0.5 out of three I wouldn't even say this spice but yes it is an emotional book so that is my second favorite Taylor Jenkins read book okay so my third favorite Taylor Jenkins read book is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and I feel like this is the book that everyone puts as either their number one or number two. So this is like real close to One Tree Loves. This is a really, just really interesting book that I've never read something like this before. Majority of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books are like this. The way she writes is just so different to other authors. You just know you're reading Taylor Jenkins Reid. And this book is no exception. This one is like a cult classic everybody loves this book and rightly so so this book is about a woman named Evelyn Hugo and she is a movie star she's an icon in the industry she's done it all and everybody loves her everybody loves her image everybody loves everyone thinks she's beautiful like everyone just really loves this this star she's an icon and one day a reporter is contacted and a journalist to write a story about Evelyn. She's very private. She's never done like really in-depth interviews before. So it's a bit odd. Um, but this, this uh, interviewer goes in and she's specifically requested this uh, journalist uh, to interview her. And you just go back in time and you, it's kind of like, not flashbacks because she's telling the story in the interview, but you go back in time to her era when she was on the rise and you kind of hear her journey, Evelyn's journey from the start to where she is now, like her rise to fame, what she had to do to get to where she is in life. And just the tea is spilt in this book. It is well and truly spilt. You find out everything that went on. She does not hold back on the truths and the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So you hear about the seven husbands that she was married to, why, what really went on in these relationships. And it is just so interesting. And I don't know, I feel like it gives you a glimpse into like celebrities, like you never know the real story. You never know what really goes on. And you just wanna know so bad. 
and it kind of this story like kind of like I don't know feeds that desire I guess and it's just written really well and a t true Taylor Jenkins Reid style there is one-liners there is like suspense you really have to wait till the end to get everything that you want from this book but it gives you everything you want and yeah this one's five out of five for sure not spicy it's like zero none of these books are spicy i'm gonna take out the spice scale out of this <laughs> so yeah five out of five would highly recommend this book i highly recommend the first three books i've spoken about so far and they're all kind of connected is this connected in this one they all oh yeah all the books um all her books are like connected in a way, not One True Loves, but Daisy Jones and The Six has a character that appears in The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which is really cool. And it's like an Easter egg. It's like a Taylor Swift Easter egg. And when you read the bit, you're like, ah, and it all connects a little bit. Like they're not like really important characters, but it's just like a little tie in because it's all around the same era as as this book. So that's pretty interesting as well. So my next favourite book by Taylor Jenkins Reid is After I Do, and this is more contemporary fiction, and it's very different to Daisy Jones and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, because those are like really glitz and glams, and like you're transported into this different time, and it's just like a different kind of world that you're like getting to look into. While this one is more realistic, it's about a modern couple that's going through a life experience that kind of thing so this is about a couple named lauren and ryan and they have been together since college they fell in love in college and this is like years and years later so they've been together like they have pretty much their whole lives now and they f just fall out of love they get angry at each other they constantly fighting and bickering and no one is like enjoying the situation one day they just decide that enough is enough they need to separate and figure themselves out can they get back together can they fall back in love just like they need to separate to figure it out and you're kind of like on this life journey with Lauren just like her trying to navigate being single again what she really wants does she want to get back with Ryan what kind of person is she she's lost herself in this relationship and she doesn't know what she wants and who she is so that was really cool I really enjoyed that so I really love this book I went into it thinking it was more romance than it is, which I think if I knew from the get-go it wasn't a book about romance, I would have like had different feelings towards this book. I still love this book and I'm tossing up between a five or a four. I think I'm going to give it a... Can I give it a 4.5? 4.5? 4.5? I'm going to give it a... My heart's saying four. I'm going to give it a four. But it's a strong four. I love this book. I've read it twice. But I will say it is more contemporary fiction than romance. There's elements of romance. It's like probably 30% of romance. 30% romance, 70% just fiction. And you're going through like Lauren's life journey. But you got to remember that there's like a year where they're separated. And they, they're like growing as people, which I really enjoyed. But... I'm a romance person at heart. I want I want 100% romance in my books, but this is still a really great book. So highly recommend this one. It is my number four spot. <laughs> so my fifth favorite book by Taylor Jenkins Reid is Forever Interrupted. And this is another book that got me in my feels. Like I was crying. <laughs> I did not expect to cry in this one, but this one, like it made me tear up. I was definitely like, had a little sob. And this one is about a woman named Elsie and a man named Ben. And they fall in love very quickly. It is, it's kind of instant love, but not in a gross way. Like instant love just done well. They're two people that have found each other and they just feel this instant connection. So they don't date for a long time and they get married really quickly. They're just madly in love. So they get married and they're in this love bubble. And one day Ben goes off. And he unfortunately dies. He gets hit by a car or a truck or something he, and he passes away, unfortunately. And Elsie is obviously shocked, heartbroken, doesn't know what to do. She's just finally met the love of her life after like being single and like thinking she's going to be alone forever. Finally meets the man of her dreams and he's ripped, ripped away from her. 
and she just goes on this crazy journey of like figuring herself out without Ben moving on and because of the relationship moves so fast she never met his family never met his mum and his mum kind of becomes a pit like a core person in her life and they go on this mad adventure together as well and they don't get on because they never knew each other and the mum's confused why she doesn't know who her her, her son is his partner is so it's all this stuff goes like kicks off at the very beginning of the book and you kind of like get flashbacks into her relationship with Ben and the flashbacks are the, my favorite part because Ben is a sweetheart anyway it's just like a really character driven book and um I really enjoyed it really like I love Ben I loved hearing about Ben I loved any moment that Ben would appear in this story so I've given this one a four out of five it's a strong four uh, and I would highly recommend it. It's definitely more contemporary fiction than romance. You're on this like journey with Elise as she's like growing by herself and there is like the best one liner. Like this book is worth reading just for the final page. I can't give anything away but this final page that Taylor Jenkins reads leaves you with will sit with you and it made me it hits so i highly recommend this one just to read the last page and let me know what you think but yeah this is a really great book so the next book on my list for taylor jenkins read is malibu rising please note that i did not say one of my favorite books of all time because it does not get that status but it is still a good book so this book is about a very famous family that lives in Malibu, uh, Nina, Jay, Hud and Kit. These kids all kind of like have a famous walk of life. One, Nina is a supermodel, Jay is a famous surfer, Hud is a famous photographer and Kit is a bit younger so she doesn't have a claim to fame yet. But their dad is Mick Reaver and Mick Reaver is a famous singer um, of that time period. So they're, this is set in the 1980s. And Mick Reaver has like been famous for years and years. He's like a very iconic singer. Um, he is not very involved in the family, but the family still has this prestigious name. And Mick Reaver makes an appearance in Daisy Jones and the Six. Does he make an appearance? Yes, he makes an appearance very quickly and he makes an appearance in The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So when this first, when this book was being released, it was so exciting just by any Taylor Jenkins Reads fans because it's like this world is all connected and all that good stuff. I absolutely love it. So this is about th the kids and their journey in life. They've got this big end of summer party going on and they throw it every year. It's like the biggest bash and everyone talks about it. It is the place to be and all the kids are like going through it. They've all got these things that are like really going on and you're kind of like working through each of the kids kids situations what they're going through so what i loved about this book was june reaver and june reaver is the mother of the kids and she is just one of my favorite characters of every any book i've ever read i love june and i am getting emotional just thinking about june wow wow this book wow <laughs> This is another book where I'm going to like only read once a year because I love a good cry and I'm getting teary just thinking about June. Anyway, so June is the mother of the kids. Obviously, the, they've just got this journey with the kids and all this and June's kind of like kind of sets the scene. You get flashbacks from June's perspective. You get flashbacks from everyone's kind of perspective, which is what I didn't actually enjoy in this book. I don't enjoy books where they're like heaps of different pops like pick a pov. Pick two pobs. I don't want six pobs running around. And that's what this book is. I really love the first 60% of this book. The 60 per, first 60% I was like, wow, this is going to be my favorite book of all time. This has got me. I'm like hooked. And then the last 40%, it kind of was like, meh, meh. <laughs> like a serious meh, meh. Like it was not like, I don't know what kind of happened at the end of the book. So that's why I can't give this 5 out of 5. Like the 60% I read, 5 out of 5 for sure. But I'm sticking with like a 4 out of 5 because I did feel all the feels. I was sobbing reading this story. And yeah, you really like grow on the characters. But it just, it didn't hit everything for me. 
The next book on my Taylor Jenkins read list is Evidence of an Affair and this is actually a short story so it is very quick. I think I read it in like an hour, like an hour and a half. It is very quick and it's on Kindle Unlimited which I was super shocked to see it on there but it's very smart and I think more authors need to do this because you put one book on, people read it, people love your writing style, they're obviously going to go in and buy your other books. It's so smart. So hats off to Taylor Jenkins Reid. So this book is about two people, Kerry and David, and they're both married. They've both been married for a long time. They've got, um, David has kids. Kerry doesn't have children, but she really wants to start a family. And Kerry finds out that her husband is having an affair. She finds letters, she finds hints, and she just knows without a doubt her husband is having an affair and she's obviously heartbroken. She gets the address of David <clears throat> through the letters and re reaches out to him. She's done like her background research, re reaches out and just says, I think my husband is having an affair with your wife. Wow, what a letter to receive. They start this relationship via letters and getting information on this affair. They're not sure what to do and they really lean on each other to find out what they should do. They both don't want their relationships to end. They're not sure how to continue. So this short this short story is basically just letters to the other party about what they're going through. And they start a connection and a friendship and support system with each other. And that's kind of like how it is. And I, I love how her books are always so different. Like Daisy Jones was an interview the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo was an interview and we've got flashbacks. Like I love how they're just like written a bit different to like other books. So the letter thing was kind of cool. I liked it. I don't like random letters and emails in books like gross. It's not my favorite thing. So it was actually surprising that I enjoyed this, but you kind of reading it, it kind of feels like it's the story anyway. You forget it's a letter. Does that make sense? Um, so I did really enjoy this. I'm giving it a... 3.5. I didn't love it. I probably won't reread this. I probably won't reread this. Maybe when I forget about the story altogether. I've read it twice. Once and when I first started reading her and then this year I was like I can't even remember what this book is about and it was so short. I thought I'll just give it a quick reread. Uh, so I would say read it because it's a short story and you've got to finish your Taylor Jenkins read catalogue but it's not like it's not the be all and end all. She does end it as true Taylor Jenkins Reid style with a bomb and you're like damn damn what a way to end this so it's worth reading for the bomb that happens at the end but not my fave could have gone without it so the last and my least favorite Taylor Jenkins Reid book is maybe in another life and I actually love this title I was really excited to read this book. The title leads to so many possibilities. The description's really good. I thought this was going to be a really cute contemporary romance book. And I think people, I have heard that people like it. It's got like a 3.9 or something on Goodreads. So people do enjoy this book. I did not enjoy this book at all. I mean, no, I didn't. <laughs> So this book is about a woman named Hannah and she's 29 and she's lost. She does not know what she wants out of her life. She's moved. She's always moving like to different parts of the world, wants to experience different things, doesn't really know what she wants to do. She's kind of in limbo. Like all her friends are settling down. They've all married. They've all got these stable jobs and she's just like doesn't know what she wants out of life. So she goes to move back in with her best friend Gabby so one night she goes out with Gabby and like some old mates and Gabby's friends and she runs into her old boyfriend from high school Ethan and Ethan is gorgeous and like I don't know she gets like little feels but she's not sure if it's the right decision to like pursue something with him at the end of the night he offers to drive her home or take her home or like keep the night going kind of thing and she doesn't go home with him and then in an alternate universe, she does. So you've got like two stories running, like sliding doors vibe. One night, one life where she goes home with him or goes, continues the night with him and the other life where she doesn't and she goes home with her friend and that's the end of her night. And I love that concept. I love that idea and I love it. But 
what I didn't love was Hannah. I feel like if you don't like the lead character, you're just not going to enjoy the book. I found her to be really like, just not my favorite kind of character. She, I don't know. She just wasn't it. She wasn't like nice. She was a bit, everything kind of like revolved around her. She was very selfish. I don't know, I just didn't connect with her, didn't vibe, wasn't rooting for her in any shape or form. <laughs> so it was kind of like painful. It was painful to read this book uh, because I just didn't gel with her and the things that were happening in the book. But I love the premise of the book, which is why it was like, probably was why I hated it as much as I did because I like had such high expectations, Taylor Jenkins read. I, all her books are phenomenal. So yeah, this one just wasn't for me. Didn't like Hannah. Didn't like the direction the story went in. There are some great one-liners. Like at the end, there's a line and I'm like, damn, that's a good line. I wish I liked this book because that line would have hit more. But yeah, it wasn't for me. I'm giving this one a three, a 2.5. I feel like the writing is good. So I've got to give it a, a three. It's like 60%. You, did, you handed in the essay, Taylor. You're getting, you're getting 60 from me. So that was my favorite to my least favorite Taylor Jenkins Reads books. I think the clear takeaway is if you haven't read Daisy Jones and the Six, read it right now. Go to your library. Go get it. If you haven't read Evelyn Hugo, get it. <laughs> if you haven't read One True Loves, get it. Those top three are an absolute reading must. And the other ones you could go without. You could go without them or you could finish the portfolio, guys. Come on. So thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all the love, the comments, the follows. If you aren't subscribed, definitely subscribe if you want. It is so cute and like, I don't know, so wholesome. It fills my heart when I get a little notification and I've got a new subscriber. It is so cool to me because I grew up watching like Zoella, Alfie days, all the cool, all the people back in the day. And I always wanted to do a YouTube, but I never liked anything enough. Like I didn't love makeup. I didn't love hair. I didn't love, I love fashion, but I could never afford a lot of clothes or makeup, but books, anyone can get a book. And that's why, wow, I've gotten a bit of rant, but that's why I love books because anyone, well, most people can access a book in some way or some form through a friend, a library, a store, the good, like the thrift store, things like that. You can usually get your hands on a book and that's really cool. That's really cool. So that is what this channel is about. So thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. And I hope you have a lovely day. Thanks guys. Bye.